even though we kind of look at them and we see, oh, wow, they're really true to the religion because of the way they look, they right. actually don't, you know, they're not orthodox themselves. Right. So, you know, it seems well, to be speaking, that, you know, I was speaking mm-hmm. in the general. I wasn't speaking specific. Uh, okay. uh, no, you know, nothing should be painted with a broad brush. You know, okay. um, no, I, got I, you, I was speaking in, gener- in generality. Yes. Yeah. Right. Right. You know. I got you. And you know what I think? I think that the whole issue is that when you look at a lot of Muslims and Jews, particularly, you know, if they're from largely Muslim and Jewish countries, they have that law, like their government, you know, like here in America, you know, the claim is that, you know, it's separate, uh, church and state are separate. So yeah. our laws, you know, we claim that our laws do not support any particular religion, whereas when you go to a lot of Muslim and, you know, uh, Jewish, uh, you know, nations or whatever, enclaves, their law is unabashedly religious. Right. So in that sense, it may really seem like, you know, definitely that religion is more for them religion as opposed to culture. But if there's a law saying that you have to do something at a particular time, is that religion anymore or does it become, you know, a mandate? And I'm just throwing that out there. You're right, and that's more of a theological discussion um, on for the different religions, um, mm-hmm. uh, where I, uh, whether actually performing specific actions at specific times, face, whether it's facing the east, whether it's uh, uh, not eating before sundown during a specific month, or or, or, or any of those things, and that, that those are theological discussions for within each individual religion. They don't necessarily denote whether or not uh, the religion itself to that person is cultural. That's for the individual to decide. If the individual right. is living up to what he claims to believe. And see, and that's what I think a lot of it centers around. It centers around what you believe. If you say you believe, then how can you be, you know, I'll use the, the, the term lukewarm about what you say you believe in. And and that's okay, really what well. we do. When we, when we, when we take... And, and religion is really a bad word um, for, from my perspective also because it's, I, re, I, I really, speaking from a faith perspective, when you take your faith and you say that your faith is not good enough the way it's presented to you, so you're going to create your own to a degree, you know, create your own faith to a degree, uh, that, that, that kind of waters down the faith and, and the most, the, the biggest impact you'll have is if someone uh, if someone you're trying to um, convert or you're trying to uh, explain your religion to says, but you, I see you do this, but you say you're this, you're confusing me. So now, not only yeah, you know, while it's your personal choice, now it, it 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 has the potential to spread to others and to 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 dissuade people from from um, religion as a whole, which is one of the reasons why people are dissuaded from religion. Because they, wow, see, well, they see the way, especially Christianity, they see the way Christians act. And then they say, well, why, you know, you, you can't even stick to the own rules that you claim to, to take on. Why, you know, why should I, why should I believe what, you, what, what, what makes your religion any more different than anyone else's? Or okay, better well, or well, thank you so much for that. That was really, and we're going to take what you said and we're going to piggyback off of that because that's something that I want to bring up, too. But I thank you so much for calling in, Mr. Look, Mr. Deacon, sir. I don't really know you. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I thank you so much. And please continue to listen. And um, please like our Facebook page. And I did. Thanks to you. Same All right, you. thank you so much. All right, All right night, night. Can anybody okay. hear me? Hey, yes, yes you Lord, we've got you. Oh, my God. Look, can I just that throw something so out good. there real quick? Yes, please. All right. In Indonesia, right, which is basically a Muslim and Islam country, you had to declare one of the five religions that they recognize in order to be a citizen. You can't get a driver's license or none of that. you got to claim one wow. of the five major religions. Okay, Interesting. And that, that's really interesting when we see what happens when religion becomes law. And even though we, you know, we say that in America that that's not the case, we see that all the time with certain laws that are in effect, uh, certain laws, you know, like with gay marriage. You know, people are saying, no, it's wrong, and they're basing it on the Bible. 
So it, it gets really interesting when you mix government and, and religion to me. Um, Tawana, what say you on the topic? Oh, well, I, I just got in, so I didn't even get a chance to listen to everybody. Um, so I'm not even sure what part of the conversation you guys are at. <laughs> okay, nice. Look, uh. thank you. That was a big raise. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. I mean, if you want, okay, fine. I'm going to say something. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what y'all discussed. I feel like we were talking about Michael Jackson. Okay. We were talking about Michael Jackson. I ain't hear nothing. Who said so? <laughs> y'all got jokes tonight. <laughs> well, you know what? Okay, we're going to let you jump in. We're going to let you jump in because I know that you will. Um, We've got another caller, and I want to hear what this caller has to say. Hi, you're on in Spirit Talk Radio. Hello. Hello. Maybe they're praying. No, I'm sorry. Okay, I do right. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's not funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Look, we can, okay, we're going to put you on hold, person. I'm so sorry, sir or ma'am. And um, we'll we'll try you again in a couple of minutes. I think people are like, okay, I'm just going to, you know, like do something while I'm waiting and, you know, whatever. Okay, so getting back to the religion as a, a cultural thing versus, you know, actual religion, I have to say that for me, like one of the things that I, I do have to say about um, what the caller was talking, what he mentioned, what, what the good deacon mentioned, he mentioned, you know, looking at, you know, and I'll just say Christians because Christianity is the dominant culture, you know, in this uh, mm -hmm. country, and it's definitely my cultural background. I can't speak on any other religion because they're not part of my cultural background. So just talking about Christianity for a minute, I know I've seen a lot of Christians do a lot of things that have made me question, wow, you know, um, I've kind of allowed the people to cloud my view of the actual religion. And I think that might have started to happen first, where I looked right. at some some people and look at, looked at the hypocrisy of some people and said, ooh, I don't want to be part of this team. And I might have done that even before I actually, you know, really truly studied some of the scriptures. Um, I don't know. Is that wrong? Oh, if for me, going back to what the deacon was talking about, a, you know, like a chef, if somebody says, I'm a good cook, you know, or I'm a teacher, any label that we want to put on ourselves, there are varying degrees, um, and it's it's subjective. It's like saying, okay, well, I'm a teacher. What is your qualification for being a teacher? Well, I have a degree, and they're giving, they're entrusting you with students to educate them. Now, for every classroom that you go into, the teaching styles change, the um efficiency of the teacher changes, the success of the students change because they're implementing and they're they're, um, they're practicing this, um, I guess, profession or label, you know, in different ways. And when you look at religion, it's the same thing. Like people are going to act out their convictions. Now, the message doesn't change, you know, but people and the way that they act it out is going to vary because we are people. The same way we all don't make the same chili, we don't make the same spaghetti when given a certain position to govern, you know, Donella, you're a radio host and you have joined the company of many other radio hosts and your style is uniquely yours. You see what I'm saying? And I believe that, yes, there are rules, quote, unquote, and there are um, things that we automatically look at, which is the exterior world, like you're a Christian, and, again, I speak on Christian because, again, that's my cultural background, and those are my beliefs, and so it's the only one that I, you know, I'm familiar with that I feel comfortable speaking about. But, you know, for instance, if you're a Christian, you know, the first thing people want to say is, oh, you shouldn't be having sex before marriage, you shouldn't be drinking, you shouldn't be smoking, you shouldn't be, you know, and it's all these you shouldn't, when all of those shouldn't don't equal a Christian. You know, belief in Jesus Christ is what makes the Christian. That's what produces the Christian, everything else. Um, is a process of uh, growth in conviction, now, if that makes any sense. Okay, and see, that confuses me a little bit where, and I'm just, and honest, this may sound stupid to me, I'm, to, to anyone, I'm sorry, 
And before anyone who is listening to this show, and if you don't know me, I make fun of religion. I am a, a skeptic. I consider myself to be very spiritual, but, you know, religion, I, I just think is kind of, you know, whatever. And so I'm confused, and I, I try to look at religion quite logically, which is probably the wrong thing to do, because as soon as you look at it logically, it's just like, okay, this makes no sense. At least I'm saying it, and I'm going to be bold and say it, whatever, fine. Anyway, I don't understand, like, when people say that, okay, well, in order to be a Christian, all you need to do is accept Jesus Christ. If that's the that's case, so, so, yeah, so does that mean that I can drink, smoke, suck, you know, and all that other stuff? Okay, and I'm ready to chime in. I'm ready to chime in. Okay, I'm ready now. Come in, ready. I'm ready. Brother Mike, can you hear you also? You can jump in at any time. Okay, hello, can you hear me? Oh. Hey, Brother Mike. I can hear you, sir. Hey, what's yeah, going sorry, on? Yeah, I'm I didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just wanted Brother to, uh, brother Mike to know that, look, he's on the floor. But, yes, no, go, on, go ahead, please. <laughs> okay, see, I think that being a Christian has definitely changed its form in society today. Because when I grew up, you didn't have to just say, oh, um, I accept Jesus Christ in my life, and then that was it. No, you had to not just talk it, you had to walk it, or at least try your best to walk it. And I feel like society has somewhat changed that, and it's like, oh, well, you could just accept him, and that's, you know, it's kind of like watering the religion down. And I guess that's part yeah. of the culture or whatever. And, I, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't believe it's that simple, because, I mean, if you go back to the actual book that's supposed to govern the religion, I mean, it's not just about saying it. It's about actually doing something. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a little bit more than just saying, okay, I accept him into my life. So, you know, I kind of think society has definitely watered down, or people in general have definitely watered down religion to kind of fit today's, you know, world. And that's why I think a lot of people don't take it seriously. I think a lot of people show up on Sunday, they think it's good enough, or some people quote Bible scriptures and they think it's good enough, and they be walking out here doing all types of unscrupulous things, and then they'd be like, yeah, but I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. It's almost right. like they do it when it fits them, like when it's convenient. You know, it's like, okay, but when I'm out here drinking, I'm not a Christian. I'm big and bad. But when I'm before the court, I'm praying on Jesus because I want him to help me. Like, you know, right. it's like, oh, but where was Jesus when you was committing them crimes? Right. Like, you wasn't thinking Tweet. about Jesus. <laughs> Tweet. <laughs> right. Right. And I feel that, and I feel like a lot of that stuff does go on. But as it pertains to the point you made about it being watered down, the message hasn't changed. Your convictions, like you have to have an understanding of something, right, to act on it, okay? So it's like when you come into the world as a child, there are things that you just don't know. You know, you don't come into this world understanding right from wrong. And even the things that people tell you are wrong, a lot of times from a child's perspective, you don't understand why it's wrong, so you want to do it anyway, you know. It's the same thing when you come into any knowledge or you come into any new environment, if it's a new job, if it's a new responsibility, if it's being a parent. You know what I'm saying? There are things that um, you don't understand, and it's the same thing with a Christian. It's like if people expect a Christian, okay, well, I'm a Christian now, so all of these external behaviors need to be eliminated so then I can look a certain way. But when you talk about the book that governs the religion, the thing that it highlights most is the man's heart, and it's been so overused, the whole God knows my heart thing. It's not about God knowing my heart. What the Bible emphasizes is self-examination. It's what, what you care about. You see what I'm saying? Are you a-